Hey everyone, coming up, Lucky Fortune Cookery at Disney California Adventure got an overhaul and Josh DeMauro actually showed up just to make everyone feel comfortable with the change. That's actually about it. And then we're going to talk about the D23 Expo, which is happening this weekend. So from the Bob Varley studio and points around Southern California, this is the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged Disneyland Edition, episode 780 for the week of August 21st, 2019. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at www.DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. And also by DizBoards.com. Join over a million Disney fans discussing their Disney vacation, the latest news, rumors, and so much more. Visit DizBoards.com and join the discussion today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Disneyland Edition. I'm your host, Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Mr. Rhino. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I decided just. Okay. That. I was. You know, We're going share today, mm, but with a mister. Yeah. So, Mr. Rhino. And then back on the controls, we have Corey Fascanaro. Hi, guys. And then from Fresno, California, we've got Tom Bell. Hey. And of course, the undisclosed beachfront location property next to a highway in Southern California, <laughs> Morgan Lamone. Hi. Hey. So, everyone, thank you for being here this week. We've got uh, not really a fun episode for you, uh, not really an informational episode for you, but we still have something that I like to call a placeholder. And that Ooh. is what happens when uh, we have to do an episode, but we don't have that much to actually talk about. So, uh, and But, I mean, we do at the same time, too, so I don't want to really, really uh, negate this too much. But before we get started with everything we are going to discuss today, of course, we have to go through our typical housekeeping process and such and the the one main thing that i want to mention is that we uh, talked about it i believe on last week's show Corey mentioned it and that is our campaign to uh reinvigorate uh, the uh our our one million dollar gold go donation for give kids the world started stumbling all those words together by uh by means of our power of 10 where you you donate ten dollars and get your friends to donate ten dollars and they need to get their friends to donate ten dollars and maybe just donate a hundred dollars and say you don't have friends i have seen a lot of people say that <laughs> and i respect them for no friendship that is something that i envy and wish that i could do myself but yes, you can donate automatically uh, as part of our, our goal to reach a million dollars donated to Give Kids the World by texting DREAMS20 to 44321. That's again, all you have to do is text DREAMS20 to 44321 and it will hook you up with how you can actually donate in, in the name of the Diz and DREAMS Unlimited Travel. And then you can be helping to support a good cause. And that is, it's, you know what, sending kids to the Give Kids the World Village here in Orlando, Florida, it is definitely a good cause. And if you say it's not, then what type of person are you really? Terrible. You. Yeah, very, pretty much a terrible person. Thank you. Thank you for filling in the gaps there. So that's the main thing I had to mention in this session of housekeeping. Anyone else got any housekeeping? Anyone? No. No. Um, no. I just want a reminder, you remind people, because I got a tweet about it this morning that uh, we will not have the booth at D23. However, yes. uh, we some of us will be there and we will still be providing that same wonderful coverage that we have done for the last two, well, and then three events because Craig was there. I've been there 13, 2013, 15, right? 17. Yeah. So I've been 15 and 17. And so, you know, as you know, we only get, we cover it more and more and more. So yeah. Tom's been there since the beginning. Mm-hmm. As has Michael. So I have a plaque. <laughs> I, I think he's being serious, though. So it's he had it made himself, of course. To, I've been to every one. Well, he didn't get a cricket machine for no reason. <laughs> I, Maybe he did. I don't. I don't know his life. We've never been to Fresno, California. I don't even know if it snows there. It might. Anyways, do they know it's Christmas? 
Maybe, maybe not. Okay. But yeah, no, we will be out at the D23 Expo uh, this weekend. So, of course, if you see us, come up and say hi. Uh, as Rhino said, we will not have that booth that we've been promoting for months and months Just and months. Just an empty square. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you'll see probably one empty square on the showroom floor. I'm just going to be sitting there. <laughs> It's, uh, listen, I, I was even getting to the point, like, it, should we just put one chair there in the middle and just, just have it sit there? <laughs> I think we should have done some something. Bring some tape and make a square and sit right in the middle of it. Yeah, or just like put, like you said, one chair with just a sign that was very mysterious, you know, and then they have to come and find yeah. it. We'll know? podcast for food. An art art piece, <laughs> I was well, thinking. I was actually even thinking we don't even actually sit in the chair. We just put a sign. We'll be back in five minutes and <laughs> just let it sit there for three days straight and see how people react to it. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's sad that we're not doing that, but I'll be there. Rhino will be there. Tom will be there. Michael Bowling will be there. Hopefully Morgan will be there. Uh, I'm it's we're working on it, man. We are very much working on having all of us be there and we'll try to provide you great coverage. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for us. Uh, into, I mean, we're still going to have a slew of videos and such, but without our booth space, being able to do our live broadcast like we did in the past, it's just going to it's going to make things a little hairier. It's not going to be as polished. It's not going to be as clean, but we're going to still do our best. And of course, if you see us, please say hi. Uh, if we have a laptop sitting in front of us, and it looks like we're talking about what we just saw and and it looks like we're live streaming and maybe if you go to disunplugged.com or youtube.com slash disunplugged and see that we're currently live streaming uh maybe just like give us a wave and and next time you see us say hi so it's it's sometimes it's gonna look like we're we're not actually recording stuff but we really are so i apologize in advance if we offend anyone because of it we probably will and that's our burden to bear but uh yeah it's gonna be gonna be a good time we'll talk about that more at the end of the episode so anyone else have any last things to say um yeah the guardians um Brian, I was think, wondering if there was a reservation system. I mm-hmm. checked when I was in the parks, and for APs to go after closing, um, you just need to be in the parks. And what day does that begin again? I don't remember, Tom. <laughs> I thought that was the 25th of August, if I remember correctly. I believe it's Sunday, yeah. I believe it was the 25th through the 31st. Throw me under the bus, thanks. I'm, I'm going to try and do it. I want the lithograph. I want the lithograph. What was that about? I want the lithograph. I want the lithograph. <laughs> I didn't realize I was in here with a, a Looney Tune right now. I want that lithograph. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, you know what? If that means no more housekeeping, we're just going to rock and roll right into this. And we're going to go into the only news story that we really have from this week. Uh, And that is, as I said before in that cold open there, the Lucky Fortune Cookery at Disney California Adventure has changed their menu. And from what I can tell, no one is happy about it. Oh. No one. Really? Really? I, I don't know. I haven't who's, who's I like going the, out there and really talking about it actually i'll, I'll just I, I eat there every time i go out there well so i get would the you pe- be happy that it changed well if you I, eat there okay every time? okay you know what i spoke too quickly i don't eat there i drink the peach tea there which is real good wow so it went from i eat there every time to i drink <laughs> a peach green tea there every time i didn't say it was green tea craig i just said it was peach i mean i would was, i Okay, you're right. You're right. You did not say it was green tea. I assumed this incorrectly. Is, this it is might terrible have been black tea. On your part. <laughs> <laughs> it, may, it could have been any type of tea. So it could have been white tea. It could have been oolong. I'm not quite sure. Maybe someone will help fill me in on what tea it was in case it's no longer on that menu. Here it is. It's the Lucky Fortune Tea, which is iced tea with flavors of red passion fruit and mango topped with passion fruit mango fruit foam. So I was even a liar. <laughs> the facts keep changing in this case. Well, unless they dropped the tea from before. And it was peach before. Maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe you're right, because I am on the website. Tom, you changed the menu. Was there peach tea before? I don't remember. Okay. It's gone now. Okay. Um, well, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of looking forward to it because it's, it's a wider range of items now. Yeah. Um, before, it was like a bowl, and you chose your, your protein and your sauce. But now there's like a spicy Szechuan chicken, teriyaki chicken. They have a... a, a They've bond me. Uh, bond me sandwich. Yeah. Uh, they have pork ramen. Oh, 
Ramen. Okay, I. Ramen. This was already one of my favorites. And as a side, you can get like the toppings, like the, the mushrooms and the and the egg. Yes. Stuff to go on. Yeah, no. Separate. I have to go. Tea. I must go immediately. I mean, I, we're going tomorrow already, but it's fine. Yeah, I will. I will. I know we're meeting tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, no, it, it does actually look good. I I think I only ate it Lucky Fortune once before when I was saying people got outraged. I, of course discussing my friend carly who is a complete lunatic and <laughs> yeah she, she, sure she was is. about happy she no she went on like I, how many instagram oh, stories yeah, about she, it i so. remember now she was mad about the noodles or something like that yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, it was like i, I think she did cry <laughs> yeah i only like that i go uh, i'm okay she's not gonna watch this or listen to it ever so <laughs> we're we're safe on making fun of her a little bit but uh you know it's she's if you don't make fun of your friends what are they actually there for what are they really good for? But the menu looks awesome. That's so. what friends are for. <laughs> like, like Tom said, the entrees. Now we've got teriyaki chicken with sautéed vegetables, steamed rice, Szechuan chicken, sautéed vegetables, steamed rice, beef bulgogi. 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 I can never say bulgogi right. Wrap uh, with garlic flavored chips. The vegan banh mi, which I get Rhino even more excited. Banh he loves mi, that that's vegan good. stuff with lemongrass cucumber salad. Mm mm mm. Pork I love ramen, nori roasted corn and green onion sounds good mm. that all what? sounds really good i'm not gonna sh- no i'm just saying it sounds good oh i mean that's all Is i that said on me oh that i would me, say yeah that good. was and like i said josh tomorrow did visit uh and you know posted about it on his instagram breaking breaking that news for disneylanders out there before anyone else can i don't know maybe so, someone so else no more uh, dumplings first. or anything huh yeah uh, uh, they do have the pot stickers the pot they stickers have uh, chicken wings um, they don't have the edamame anymore. That's fine. Yeah. So, so the when you guys, the, I put stickers, chicken wings, and then the the toppings for your ramen. I am, the thing I'm most excited about from here is the Lucky Dragon IPA. That is yeah, they have some new beers. Yeah, hundred percent citra hops. I love citra. Gets that nice citrus flavor to it, but it's also made with locally sourced orange and lemon on there. Mm, so I want to try that. I mean, that it's I, I'm interested in who makes it. I I'm, I know we didn't have that information on there, but I'm assuming that a local Southern California brewery is right. brewing it completely for uh, for Lucky Fortune, and that is awesome. I love that. Even like I'm even in on the the Japanese mule made with that yeah. Japanese yeah. whiskey. Japanese whiskey, good. So um, <laughs> yeah. when you guys go out there to California, I'm I'm not actually going out. Will you guys uh, bring me back some of the Szechuan chicken? I will buy it on the first day. I will bring it back for you next Tuesday. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have the refrigerator space, yeah. so we will have to leave it sitting out uh, for a couple of days. It will be fine. It will make it back. <laughs> oh, that's right. They Szechuan turkey. The whole thing about the ice, you can't bring the ice into the park, so that yeah. might that it, might be. Yeah. And, you know, How the, are you supposed to get a kidney in and out of there? Jeez. <laughs> Um, I am pretty. Th- I'm not gonna lie. The the picture of the uh, Korean style of uh, the uh, good lord, I cannot speak. The chicken wings. I don't usually like meat on the bone, but I will say whenever it's like Korean style chicken wings, those are always so spicy and so good. I, I'm just excited. We gotta go here. We gotta try and make some time while we're out there. Oh yeah, no, I, I see a food vlog in our future. Mm-hmm. Eating this, so we don't know who will be invited. Maybe no one. Maybe it'll just be Rhino by himself, just sitting there, eating meat off the bone. <laughs> just crying. <laughs> that's it. That's, I just want... <laughs> for no reason. Yeah, that's fair enough. Just because. It's fair enough, but uh, I'm excited, too. I'm assuming, Morgan, you haven't gone and eaten there yet? No, I haven't. Eh. Okay. Are you sad about, the, are you sad about I it? I don't care. Um, I just like Will edamame. You the rice, Will you miss the rice bowls? Nope. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> just that edamame. That's the biggest yeah, loss just, here. Yeah, I just like it. I don't, I'm not crying over it, but <laughs> yeah, I, I do like edamame. Gosh. It's a, it's a nice chain snack. Yourself to the pool. What? Chain yourself to the restaurant and bring back the edamame. I just, guys, I just, I'll eat ramen anytime it's on a menu. I love ramen. Um, and there are some other things on here. I am just, I'm pretty jazzed about this. It's one of my Disneyland essentials is eating in this area of California Adventure, and I'm pretty psyched. Yeah, you're going right to have now. to sacrifice a bread bowl in order to be able to eat Lucky oh, Fortune. I didn't realize that until you just said it. 
So 1449 ramen in the parks or 10 cent ramen at home. I don't know. It's not the same, Tom. Ramen, <laughs> 10 cent ramen from the shelf is not real oh, no. ramen. He goes he all out. He drops the egg in there. Yeah. He I adds do sometimes. Some, yeah. I, I realize. You have to that remember. Craig knows. I don't shut up about it. Tom is from Southern California, so he he makes his own oh, ramen. Oh, he gets all fancy. Home. He goes all the way out. He's like, you know, where some people are like, oh, I'm going to pour the broth out because I don't want all that brothy brothiness. He's like, no, I'm going to keep that broth in and I'm going to drop an egg in. Sprouts. I'm going to put sprouts in there. I'm going to ignore all the warnings that these sprouts could <laughs> and, cause And then disease. you have to have some avocado on there because it's California. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> Ride the cado. Ride Everything the cado. <laughs> God, I hate that. <laughs> okay. I'll just go back to What's meat on the What's wrong with bone. him? He's riding the cotto. He's riding that cotto <laughs> train. He's one of them California kids. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming pools. Movie stars. Sunshine. <laughs> the avocados. Okay, this is really digressed. Uh, okay, never mind. Let's uh, move on. Unless anyone has any more lucky fortune news I'd to like share. to oh, talk Jesus. more about the avocados. No, sorry. <laughs> I actually have never tried avocado until I moved to California. I can confirm you can't live in California without trying avocado. Okay. <laughs> no. Confirmed. I, I mean, it's... I. I, I I think about it. I don't know when I first had probably at a bad Mexican restaurant in Pennsylvania was the Florida. first time. I know my mom always liked guacamole, but I didn't like guacamole. And probably because like the one time, you know, I buy avocados here all the time in grocery stores and stuff. We went up to Pennsylvania and looking around and like, OK, well, what, what can we add in salads and stuff? And they had like three avocados just sitting in like their produce section. And they looked awful. Like, I guess I kind of realized that avocados just don't get shipped everywhere. It's wild stuff. No, yeah, when you go home and you try to make yeah. fresh guacamole when you're in New England, you're like, oh, it's not as readily available, I feel like, as it is. I mean, you can grow an avocado tree down here. Maybe you got to wait like 10 years, but it's fine. You can I, do it. I don't have that much time to wait. Avocado, they take forever to grow. You know I don't that, right? have that much time. Yeah. Put yeah. one, plant one in your house now, and whoever lives there next will have I'm an on a 10 year plan. <laughs> Before I move, so that's not going to happen. Okay, ten-year oh, avocado plan. This is it for this avocado talk. I will accept. Check no out our new it. podcast, Avocados Riding the Cado. Got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is what happens when there's no news? <laughs> yep. This is what happens. But Morgan, uh, you have some not news news. Morgan's updates from the parks, things that she has seen mm-hmm. lately. So tell us, tell us what's going on. Yeah, so um, last week we talked about um, Marvel's 80th and how they're celebrating it in the park. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, that was so stupid. <laughs> okay, sorry. Not what you're you. saying. Um, yeah. you're, you're, what you're saying is not stupid. His newspaper boy <laughs> called to you was stupid. The what? He was like, d- d- what did you say? You were like, tell us, tell us all about it. He sounded like an old timey uh, newspaper boy. He just needed his hat. Too soon. You should do the whole show like that, or at least the beginning of it. <laughs> um, so we talked about how Marvel's celebrating their 80th and um, how they're doing it in the parks. And they, we talked about all the characters there, but I found out that it's only two sets of characters per day. So you're either going to get in one single day Mickey and Minnie in their Marvel costumes and Chip and Dale. And on the opposite days, it's going to be um, Goofy and Pluto and Donald and Daisy. So you'll never get all eight on the same day or, what? like, a mixture of characters. Yeah. So I got to see Chip and Dale and um, Mickey and Minnie one day, and I went a couple days later, and then I saw the other two sets. So it's kind of a bummer, but yeah. so you kind of got to be strategic on which days you want to go and because who you want to see. Yeah, I mean, um, it's spreading out the fun a little bit there. So I, I get that. I mean, you don't, it, it would be possible to have them all in one day, but I like that they're making it a l- slightly more sporadic in a sense by mm-hmm. by not doing it all at once there. But hopefully you, you have two days. If, if you're really interested in meeting these characters, then, you know, I, yeah. I, I'm all for it. I think, I think that every one of the characters looks awesome, with the exception mm-hmm. really of Pluto. And I apologize to Pluto yeah. for that, but it's like normal Pluto. They give him a bandana, and like there you go. They do that. Yeah, Pluto always gets like the short end of the stick. Like he just gets like a little collar update, and that's it. Like he needs like a full costume. You could like, say they screwed oh the pooch on this one. 
Well, I've nailed it. <laughs> you did nail it. <laughs> you did. You screwed the pooch and you nailed it. <laughs> so that is that is a fantastic joke. Yeah, but all the other characters, I mean, they're really, it, it's really, really in-depth. Except, I guess, even for Mickey is kind of like, he's very plain Jane is, is, mm-hmm. is Captain America. But I... I love these characters. I wish they would be more readily accessible in a way. Like it's because it it is the closest thing that harkens back to the, the days of star Wars weekends at Hollywood studios. When, when you would have all the Disney characters dressed up in their star Wars gear Donald and it's, it's fun. That's what, you know, I, I love the authenticity of meeting Marvel characters and star Wars characters, but I want that Disney touch with it. That's, part of the mm-hmm. benefits of them owning this yes it's slightly taking the brand and just smearing it all over but if it's what the people want the people deserve to get I, what they want i want to meet chip and dale as thor and loki that's what i want that was the first one who i met they were really cute and like being playful and jokey and stuff but actually donald was probably one of my favorite interactions because he's just as hulk and he's all like getting mad and like hulk smash and he was pretending to like rip off his shirt and stuff because like he was getting mad at a guy looking at daisy weird and it was it was just really cute and funny it was a really fun interaction for sure yeah, no, the only weird thing about Donald is he wears this, like, yeah, he wears bucket the bucket hat. cap yeah. that is, Bad like... hat, yeah. <laughs> it or bucket like it's hat, Daisy's yeah. floppy hat. Like, it's like, he just looks like a Californian in that way, just going to the beach later on. Like a 90s Californian. Not, I don't want to mix that up with today's California, wow. but, no, very wow. cool. And you love Daisy and her sassy, her, her, her Black Widow, her leather jacket. No. You're all about that. And, and you love no. Black Widow, your favorite character. I don't dislike Black Widow, but I don't like Daisy. <laughs> okay. Uh, so characters, very cool. Thank you for that, Morgan. What else do we got riding on that Kato train? Um, on the Marvel Animation Academy, um, I double-checked and I asked, um, what characters do you draw? And they said Iron Man, Spider-Man, Gru, and Baymax. Hmm. So, Are we talking just the faces on that? Um, they didn't specify because it's artist choice, so we kind of have to go in. And I, I miss the day that they were doing it, but yet, uh, you know. I, I thought there'd be like, way more. Like, sorry. I was just gonna say, like for Baymax, if they're just doing the head, <laughs> it seems very boring and basic. Oh but. wait, yeah, I've done Baymax before because they have them on a regular basis and it's full body. Okay. And I would recommend not making the mistake I did because they'll tell you to draw like the first circle is like the size of like a softball and then they'll have you draw a bigger circle and a bigger circle. So like don't draw that first circle too big because it's going to take up the whole page. That's what I made a mistake of. So just don't do that when you're drawing Baymax. Um, but yeah, I thought there would be more characters that they would draw like spend the whole day like the whole um, schedule being all marvel characters but it's just those four so well, i i understand that though you want to people love the animation academy and they want to draw other mm-hmm. characters other than just mm-hmm. just marvel so it's it's mm-hmm. but i but i also understand if you're there for that marvel spirit like you want that it's kind of like when you go during when I go during Halloween time and they're doing like extra villains and, and such. And I'm like, I always want to hit one of those, but it seems like it never lines up with the time that I actually want to do that. So, uh, it's just, you, you can't win at Disney. That's the ultimate story. Don't even go. Cause you can't, you can't win. You never will. Don't go because of the drawing Academy. You heard it here. Yeah. I'm telling you to just cancel your vacation. Don't go. <laughs> but what else do we got, Morgan? Um, there's a couple of construction walls popping up. Unacceptable. Um, one is in DCA near the front trolley area. Don't know why, but it just is. And then also the biggest one is the Tomorrowland sign has been removed. Yeah. In, um, What's going on with Disneyland. that? Why? Uh, why more than I do. <laughs> rumors that they're taking out all the all the rock work there, but <sighs> oh. It could be that they're just lowering the the curbs and making it more accessible and walker friendly. But I get that the 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 Astro Orbiter is creates that bottleneck there. Um, but I I do actually really like the rock work and the sign. I feel like it's very visually. I, I don't know. I think it looks really cool. So it would be a shame yeah, for that to go. 
I do agree that it needs like they need to fix the walkway over there though, so it doesn't do that bottleneck thing. It drives me crazy, but I, I, the the rocks do make for some interesting pictures yeah. and an interesting aesthetic. I wouldn't mind if they were gone though. It honestly, even though they didn't create too much of a bigger hassle already in that area, considering Astro Orbiter's there, it with all of Project Stardust that was happening, mm-hmm. it seemed like something that should have happened when they were in the midst of that, yeah. that it would have yeah. been well. The best part is no one could just see. Rhino was attempting to like I figure tried. out the best place where he could cough that wasn't too intrusive. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, up, down, <laughs> no. where? Uh, yeah, the, the rocks seem like they should have went with that entire initiative. So the fact that mm-hmm. they, they stayed, yeah. I don't know. I feel like Tomorrowland is probably due for some just serious changes and i think they probably will it seems like it's like the next area of the park that would get uh, a big renovation seeing as galaxy's edge just opened we still have so much star wars themed stuff right here i feel like they're probably going to start switching a lot up over there pretty soon i mean time will tell we know that with the d23 expo coming up that announcements could be made at the same time announcements might not be made We'll have to wait and find out on that, but it's, you know what, Tomorrowland is what it is. So I I would say just get rid of Astro Orbiter and right there, you're going to improve it yeah. drastically. So bring back people mover. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, that would, it's it, with as much as, and I'm saying this in the nicest way, with as much as Josh DeMauro is so connected with with the cast members out there and with the Disney community and all of that, I, it, I think he would score so many points if he said, you know, it doesn't matter how much money it takes, even though we'll have to rebuild the entire track from the ground up around to, to replicate it, this is what Disneyland fans want. Mm-hmm. And... I, I, like that would be the, one of the coolest things ever, but uh, I know that's me. That would living. be a legacy. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, no, no. He would he would never be forgotten in mm-hmm. the long run. Is the man who, who brought the people. Yeah. The what? Nothing. Sorry. Yeah, I, Bad I, joke. I, I said I, Matt who. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, forget about Matt Remet. And, yeah, yeah. No, uh, sorry, oh, sorry. Yes, I. It sounded like you were going in this from because it's very oh. quiet in the room for us to hear you. It sounded like you were like the man who. It's <laughs> 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 like, like wow, well, Tom is very passionate about men who. <sighs> but yeah, everybody I, at home got it. But. Yeah, oh, you know, when when I re-listen to this back, I'll, I'll be like, yep, you, Tom nailed it. But right now in the room, I didn't I didn't hear the nailing of it. So <laughs> that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Keep riding the Kado train. <laughs> so, and Morgan, you had one more part of your updates <laughs> that it was in terms of annual passes. Yeah, um, so annual passes got lifted this past weekend, and I went there on Sunday, and it wasn't any, at least the Disneyland side, wasn't any different than it typically is, Mm -hmm. because I know some passes were only um, blocked out um, at Disneyland, still could go to DCA, so the Disneyland times didn't change it very much. I I think this this last Monday, uh, the 19th, was the first day that deluxe pass holders could go into Disneyland Park this summer so Mm. and i had some friends wake up early for monday yeah (laughs) Um, i haven't i didn't really pay attention to see any changes i already know there's a ton of people out there already uh waiting for expo to start and and they're they're at the parks right now and i haven't i haven't again i haven't been like focusing too heavily on it but i from the couple friends that i have that are already there you know they're they don't seem to be posting anything about it being crazy. I know Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at least hasn't been affected. A lot of people are getting to see it for the first time uh, it, while mm-hmm. they're they're out there, but it's not like the entire, no one's reporting the entire thing breaking and Disneyland collapsing into madness and pure terror and agony. So it's, wow. <laughs> I mean, Saturday, Saturday for the first time in a long time, the parking structures filled up. Yeah, so you can tell that's that's kind of a one symbol one uh, signal that it's that's busier. 
Yeah, I, I have no doubt that this week, regardless of anything, and as well as next week for people who are going yeah. to stay after the expo and then people coming in before, I'm sure it's going to be awful to an extent. Um, you know, during probably the best time to go is if you, there's no panels or something you want to see in the afternoon, just bounce out over to to Disneyland for a short bit and hit some stuff while while everyone's dealing with the D23 Expo. But I, yeah, I, I I'll be I'll be interested to see. I'm I I need to start paying attention because Rhino and I plan on getting in the parks a little bit with the time that we have, and mm-hmm. you know if it's too zany. Whack a do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fantastic. I don't so know. that is just that is pure magic there. So that is going to do it, I believe, for Morgan's updates, unless there was anything we missed on there. Nope. Nope. Uh-huh. Okay. And we're going to wrap up this show by just uh, briefly kind of going over what what to really expect with D23 Expo this year. I know most of you at this point are, you maybe you're listening to this on your plane ride to get to California, or you're listening to this on the car ride down, and you're like, what? I didn't realize that I could have booked reservation spots for some of the panels and such, and so I have, and I didn't know there was a schedule out. I didn't know anything that was happening on there. Uh, well, we're going to talk about at least from our aspect here of what we're excited to see with it. So deal with it. But you know, of course, with D twenty three Expo, there's there's multiple aspects of it and uh they're all uniquely fun you have on the one aspect of it you have the panels these are these are what i come for i'm i'm there for the panels and the excitement of being there to to not only hear big announcements but also to be there for kind of the smaller panels that are really going into disney history which i of course love and i love being encapsulated in the history but then the other part of d23 expo is the showroom floor and and just wandering around that i mean people show up to this thing and just dress up and and do their cosplaying and such and don't even bother doing anything major they're just there to to walk around and meet people and take photos and random stuff like that and good on them that's not for me slightly for rhino Mm -hmm. probably a little bit more for morgan uh tom all the way he hasn't he hasn't been in a panel in four years now (laughs) that's probably true (laughs) but for other that's that's the problem two years years ago i went to one panel i think yeah yeah Yeah, i know it's a book Go I have ahead. a couple of friends that are doing huge group cosplays, and one of which my friend is doing a Mickey glove with another one of her friends. I have no idea what it looks like, but I'm super excited to see it. Oh, I assume that it's going to look like a glove. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to know how big it is. Like. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you on that. I got, I got, I got it. And then the, the last part, which is also one of the reasons why Tom goes for sure, that is the shopping aspect of it. A lot of exclusive stuff that you'll only find at D23 Expo or being released for the very first time. Mm-hmm. I I got very excited when uh, the the Disney Music Emporium announced that they'd be re-releasing oh, yeah, the Enchanted that. Tiki Room Jungle Cruise vinyl. Uh, that's like, oh, I, I wasn't going to go out and buy anything, but I, oh, I kind of have prepared to, to buy quite yeah. a bit. Oh. Um, the Jared Murayama ears that I know we'll be able to get later, but he like keeps harassing me about them. No, you can't. You've got it. It, it will not be available. They'll Seconds be hard after to get. They'll be hard you to get. You will never be able to get them, so you got to get them while it's I on. do kind of want that vinyl, too. I know you definitely want it, and I'm like, oh, I might get that, too. I do. The merchandise, by far, was the thing I was most excited for. Uh, Pete and Craig had the Sorcerer's Package, so I told Pete what I wanted. The things were so limited that I wanted, though, we didn't even get them, so it doesn't matter. But, like, the pins that they release at this event are absolutely nuts. Like, artist-proof Walt Disney Imagineering pins, limited edition of, like, two. Just, like, absolutely crazy, crazy things. And, uh, yeah, if you guys see anything out there. I'll PayPal you. <laughs> <laughs> good, good advice. Just uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, you know, it's just, just. I don't know. I don't know. It's all fine. But uh, so, anyways, with that, we uh, we're, we're obviously going to be bringing our coverage for everything that's fun there. But with with the panels, you know, it's you have the different levels of w- what size they're going to be from the the biggest 
events happening in Hall D23 to then the next level events happening in D23 Expo Arena, which is nuts to think about. My first year in uh, 2013 that the Expo Arena was where everything big happened Mm -hmm. and it was still relatively easy to get into everything. And now it's just on this level that you wait for a massive hall that's what tom three times the size at least and yeah i mean definitely double if not three or four times the size and you still might not get into panels there but that the first year that i went it was like we walked into legends with barely any waiting and there was it was still empty in the back and like that's just insane but then in the smaller stages, you have the stage 28, which is even the next size down, and then uh, the Walt Disney's archive stage going over a lot of the history and such. And, you know, you just you find a, a variety of panels. So I already mentioned Legends. That's something that you would see on the in the Hall D23 stage on the main, the main room, as well as the Disney Plus showcase going over everything that we should be seeing with Disney Plus. And, you know, obviously the Walt Disney Studios presentation, the Disney Parks stage presentation and then uh, just to kind of go down with even the smaller one you'll see stuff like a panel i hope i get to hit doubt i will but i would love to see it the in search of the swiss family treehouse with kevin and jody too i thought that was cool that one to me is like oh that would be awesome but the disney plus showcase ends at five o'clock that one starts at 5 30 and if it's a d23 expo then the one thing we know is the panel will if it's a big panel it will run over yeah and and we got a report so it's it's gonna be tough oh man i'm already stressed thinking about it all but uh but yeah so what for the people that are going sorry Corey. uh for the people that are going what's what's your must-see panel What's what's the one you're most excited about? Well, I like going to the you know the one that I slept in line with you last time for, that we slept in line together. We slept together. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to say it. We cuddled. Um, yeah, so I have some great photos of Greg face down on the floor <laughs> of of the uh, the hall, but um, was uh, they they're breaking it up a little differently. Last time it was uh, it used to be, it was live action animation and. Uh, wait, that's how they all they did. It's right? animation on Fridays and live action on Saturdays. Yeah, and now it's different, right? Yeah, now it's all together. Now it's Walt Disney Studios um, presentation, but that's for me. That's always my like my number one because we went the first year I ever went, we got into that, um, and we saw that's when J.J. Abrams came out to talk about force awakens and then harrison ford came out and that was kind of an amazing experience for us and then last time we were there we got to see all of the avengers on stage together and that was cool too you know so there's always something really neat in there i mean i I, you know you know me i'm obsessed with the movies and stuff like that so i'm really looking forward to that panel yeah my only regret with that panel this year is that that's from 10 to 12 on saturday The simpsons is the other panel i really want to go to yeah (laughs) and that of course is in the expo arena at the same time at 10 to 11 and It's it kills me. I know why they did this. I know that it's to kind of split up, and, and I, I understand it, but it hurts because I like for me. I wish they could have put the Simpsons later on that Saturday while the Disney on Broadway concert is happening, because I I appreciate Disney on Broadway stuff that's put on, but I feel like I've seen enough Disney on Broadway between what we have here in Walt Disney World with our. Are during Festival of the Arts with the concert series, and then attending this uh, attending concerts at other panels. It's like I we uh, I, I feel like I've seen a good amount of people sing their songs and do their stuff, and it's always awesome. But uh, it's it, you know that's just me. I don't want to insult anyone. I know Tom probably would be super excited to see Disney on Broadway, and I'm not saying that facetiously. I know he he likes it, so or he doesn't. He, I know he muted himself. Maybe you muted yourself or we're not coming through. I can't tell. Or you just don't want to speak. <laughs> it's fine. No, he doesn't want to speak. Well, okay. <laughs> I was like, I also think it'll be fun on Saturday. They're going to announce this secret Walt Disney uh, company project. Walt Disney. Well, no, they're company. announcing it on Thursday, yes. I think, and discussing it on Saturday. Right? Yeah, yeah, discussing it one thirty to two thirty on stage twenty eight, which leads me to believe it's not going to be that big of an announcement. I don't know. 
I, I, I don't know. You know, they want this if hype it, train if going. If it's that big of an announcement, why is it on stage 28? That's what yeah. I'm saying, yeah, right. Where, where is stage 28, though? Refresh my memory, which one that is? That should be usually, upstairs, right? Yeah, it's usually on the, the smaller level. room, right? I mean, it's, it's not a, a small room. room, but it's a it's definitely not massive. Right. Yeah. Um, it, so I yeah, it's that that is the one concerning thing. But I also understand that when they added this in, they probably had to look at the schedule to see what else was around and available and such. So it's actually it, stage 28 on the third floor. Yeah. Um, but if. You know, if looking the expo arena, it wouldn't have worked in there. They would have had to move panels around there. It's kind of cutting it close on time with clearing Hall D23 and then getting ready for Disney on Broadway. So it would it might just be a thing where it kind of has to be in there, or it might not be big at all. Oh, right. I just, I just saw another panel in here on Sunday. That's cool. I didn't know Keegan Michael Key was going to have his own panel. Yeah, for mm-hmm. I believe he's going to be doing a Disney Plus show or power up. Your, it says power up with power up your brain with Keegan Michael King. I that's cool. It's like a game show, right? I think. Is yes, oh. I believe that's how it's going to be. Unfortunately, we won't be able to attend that. As much as I love Keegan Michael Key, because that starts at twelve thirty, and oh, we yeah. will get out of the parks uh, panel at twelve, and I'm assuming we will be live streaming for yeah. about an hour after. After that panel and I'm was sure over, that one would be even if we weren't doing that. I'm sure that one would get out a little late too. So oh, making yeah. it over there, yeah. no, no, absolutely will. But uh, it's yeah. That, so I'm. I mean, obviously, I'm excited for Disney Parks panel and Walt Disney Studios in, in that sense. Disney Plus as well too. They just announced that they're going to do the Disney Plus bundle, which oh, yeah. is pretty awesome. Rhino, what's that about? No, no, yeah. So there was the the bundle where you can do you can sign up and get it with like Hulu, ESPN. It's Hulu. With ads, though, I already, I'm already, excuse me, I already pay for it without ads. So there's no bundle for that version. But um, what's great about it, too, is that if you are a D23 member, or you're going to the expo, you're going to have the opportunity to sign up for that. So so right now, Disney Plus is $6.99 a month or $69.99 for a year. So I'm assuming you pay it all up front. So basically, you get the two months free. And then if you're going to sign up at D23, you get to become one of the founding members or is founding something. It founding had a weird... Circle? Founding Circle? Founding yeah, circle. it was a little cultish sounding. <laughs> so you can sign up for it and it's like $23 off, so it makes it like forty seven ninety nine. So we'll just, you, you know... But you have to sign up for three years. Yeah, so it's a three-year commitment and I'm like, 50 bucks a year, hundred. So, so for three years, that's $150 right there where I'm like, okay, well, my Netflix is like at least twelve ninety nine a month for every, you know, that's how much I pay in one year. So you're telling me I'm going to get all my Marvel shows and... And uh, be able to watch Jeff Goldblum do a National Geographic show right off the bat. I'm going to sign up for that. I'm pretty sure. I, I texted Craig about it the other day that I was like, I'm pretty sure. And then you get a fancy schmancy little pin uh, for signing up to that if you're one of the founding fathers or whatever sort of yeah. scary thing they're calling it. Yes, the new founding fathers, yes. I believe. I think, so. it's, I think it's designed after the purge, actually. Yeah. yeah. I am, I'm a charter spectrum. Uh, uh, that's how I get my cable and my, my cable to watch TV and my internet. So I'm still confused on, am I going to get it for free already? Cause they keep my spectrum because they announced that they're partnering with charter spectrum and that there will be some sort of relationship oh. with that, where you might get it as well as they're also working together to break down on password sharing for Disney plus to make it that you will not be able to share your password with other people to take advantage of that like you do with Netflix and such. I don't do that with my Netflix. So you're saying I'm not that, saying I don't you're do saying it with that Sandy other Clavin. Ones. Sandy Clavin has her own Netflix okay. account. Let me tell you, <laughs> she's got her own. I tried to share Hulu with her. She'd have no part of it. She wants her own. So I'm not saying I don't have a one thing that is being shared, but um no, but yeah, that's that's interesting. But that also makes me a little nervous. Then, so they're going to get everyone to buy in on this three-year deal. But then, you know, what if yeah, that's what if yeah. another type of bundle comes out or something like that? That hmm, yeah, it's, hey, it's you got tough. me second guessing myself. Got to make lots of decisions. I mean, it's in a world where we only consume content twenty-four hours a day. You have to decide what's most important. So I I don't even sleep anymore. I, ju- I, mean, I just watch and listen to content. 
I got I gotta have my Diz Pops stuff somewhere. It's basically the feed. For, that's gonna be the feed for that now. So yeah. it's fine. Whatever. Yeah, well, yeah, so um, Patreon.com. So I stays on plug. Patreon. <laughs> okay. So any on any other things? The California folks. I know Morgan's still a question mark on. Hopefully we'll have a ticket for her. So if you know of any uh, secret underground Facebook groups that are are getting rid of tickets at the last second, please let us know. No police involved, obviously, and that's kind Police of let us know. <laughs> police let us know. No police, though. Uh, anything that, that you're particularly pumped for? Um, me, I think the parks panels. I love seeing, like, Disney Imagineers and what they're doing and creating and stuff like that. So I think that's the thing I'm most excited about. In, oh. Any guesses what we might see Disneyland related in the parks panel? I'll be honest. I don't have any guesses on anything that we're going to see with it. Obviously, uh, there's there's other websites out there that aren't the Diz that have been leaking concept artwork and stuff over the past couple months that I would definitely 100% say that based on their track record with expecting, like with the last time around with D23 Expo, knowing that a lot of stuff that they previously announced ended up being talked about at the Expo, I would say that's a safe bet with it. So we knew that Marvel was going to be discussed. We know yeah. Epcot's going to be Gosh, discussed I'm, in further. I'm hoping the and, Star Wars Hotel is a point of discussion. I hope that's not a project that ever gets scrapped or pulled or anything like that. Oh, no. So it's, I'm like... No, the Star Wars Hotel is too too far at this point i every time i drive past it like they're flying on that construction with okay it. good you, you can now good. see every single room where it's going to be and it is super super tiny and i know it looked tiny on the concept like when they were showing like the the plot of land it would be on it is very very small so it's going to be interesting with that but i i don't know i'm this is one yeah, where I, mean, I i don't i also don't want to know I loved being in that room and being surprised with news yeah. and being blown away by it. So it's, it is always fun to speculate, but it's, I, if we don't have the I, surprise, I, then why do we go? I think, I think once again, it's probably going to be Walt Disney world heavy with Epcot, a lot of Epcot, um, probably see something about the ships, the new Disney cruise line ships, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but I think for California, it may just be, the marvel stuff yeah no it's it could be limited to that it could be focusing a lot more now on paris and other international International properties we just you know it's it's going to be exciting regardless just being in the room to hear something of course they're gonna have a secret or two i'm sure of so i i can't wait for it the energy will be high the the bodies will be tired the energy will be high we can say that much i think or maybe not. But anyways, thank you, guys. I can't wait to see you and your faces in real life. I'm very excited for it. It's going to be so wonderful. <laughs> and uh, thank you to everyone out there for listening and watching to this. But uh, listening and watching to this, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Thank you for listening and watching. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have to say right now that uh, unless there is something super, super awesome announced for Disneyland at the D23 Expo that's coming up here. I don't know for sure that we'll be back with you next week for another episode because unfortunately uh, I will be at a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge (laughs) media event that's happening next week at that time. So we might. Maybe it'll be Rhino over here doing the hard work, the Lord's work. The Lord's work. (laughs) (laughs) Probably will be. I don't know. We'll see. He's he's giving me a solid no on it. He's saying not You guys yet. had your chance. You got Craig instead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm like This Batman. American Idol. Kelly Clarkson doesn't come back and retry out for American Idol, let Listen, me tell you. I'm not the hero that Gotham wants. I get it. You're the Clay Aiken. But I am the hero that Gotham deserves. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, bro. It is terrible. So, okay. So I don't know if we'll be back with you next week. It might be all of us. It might be just Rhino. It might be none of us. You'll just have to wait and find out. So that's going to do it for this episode. We'll see you again soon. And until then, remember, as Tom Bell always says, Disneyland is... (laughs) 